good morning, everybody. This is Jillian. I just wanted to, man, I was watching some videos this morning and thinking about geopolitics and all the different crimes um, in the world and the all the different cancer diseases and chronic illness, but also the behaviors. And I was thinking, I'm just thinking about like, America and we're fighting right now each other because we're so afraid that we're going to be taken over by some dictator that we're so holding fast to our arms, which is perfectly understandable given that's our constitutional right, but it's become an out of control. And then I'm looking at like Australia who disarmed their population. And yes, they have their own issues, but they are relatively peaceful. Canada, I don't know what the gun laws are in Canada, but that's a very free and open country and they don't have too much of the fighting. Yes, people have political stuff, but when you think about it, not so much, not so bad. And then I'm watching the stuff about Saudi Arabia. And I'm not saying Saudi Arabia is horrible, okay? They have specific laws and how they view their different genders that I wouldn't necessarily agree with. And some people can handle that type of, of um, I don't know, lifestyle. So what prompted me to do this video is I watched a video about women who don't want to be oppressed, escaping Saudi Arabia, and then trying to find asylum in like Australia or Canada. Right now, America is not the plus, best place to you know, to try to get asylum because we have so much controversy in America. And America used to be like the beacon of hope for people, but now we're in a period of um, uproar and we need to get everybody, I guess, well-balanced or something to now be that beacon because at this point we're not. And so it's interesting that I'm watching a lot of um, ABC Australian TV and Frontline where there's like not many commercials because I cannot stand having to hear commercials in between important information. So I'm just like tripping out, tripping out on the, um, the geopolitics around women escaping from Saudi Arabia. And some make it and some don't. And I'm thinking, why are you escaping something? Because you're fighting for your life. I mean, these women are being surrounded by um, patriarchs who essentially have taken their freedom away. Okay. And that's the culture. You know, you can't say something's wrong with it. But if it's not right for you, then you find a way to get out. Not everybody is strong enough to get out. Okay. Because I'm thinking like, you know, I'm thinking like, what, what, why can't we have a world where you have your own little area where you have like the Jilly Juice Kingdom and other people have their own little kingdoms and then you let people in, you let people out relative to if they can handle your politics and the lifestyle. And like, oh, we have that. We have that in, in like different continents and different countries as well as different groups on Facebook. So I'm just like, okay, so Saudi Arabia, it just happens to be a territory, a country, a lifestyle, a thought process that some people get along with some women like that and some men like that okay because if truly if saudi arabia saudi arabia was that bad every single woman would be out of there or they would all be banding together and i know this oppression happens and they stop them from congregating and, and but there are activists there are activists in saudi arabia okay so i'm just like okay so they, they have a chance they have a way to active to be an activist so if you can be an activist to try to get the government to allow them to drive cars, okay, you can be an activist to get out of an oppressive society. So here's the thing. It means that there's something in Saudi Arabia that some people like and some people don't. And if you and if you feel that you need to get out and you need to fight to get out to, to, to win your freedom from either your family or from the country, people do. People fight for their way out. It's not like they have every single woman locked up, okay? There are some women that are, so I'm thinking like, okay, so we have a lot of imbalances and you can't force everybody to get well balanced. You can't, you can't, but you have to take everything in perspective, okay? I mean, 
I'm looking at like the whole chili juice protocol and we're, and some people are trying to force it down people's throats and, and, um, and you don't do that. People have to actually want it. You can't tell every woman in Saudi Arabia that that's not the way to live. you got to live the way the West lives. So you must fight for your freedom. Every single person in Saudi Arabia or any place where they're oppressed, they have to find a way to, to rise up if they're not happy and or find a country or a community where or a lifestyle where it allows them the freedom to express, the freedom to live the way they see fit that doesn't hurt anybody. And so I'm thinking like, you know, it's not for me to say, if because people are like afraid of like America's gonna become like Sharia law or something. I'm like, nah, you know, there is no fear of America to turn into some oppressive society unless you're hurting other people or you're um, making up stories and then hurting your own government and hurting the people around you and all that. So, you know, I, I look at, at, at the JJs as you fight, you fight for your ability to, to live the way that you want to, you fight and you have to have the strength to do that. If you don't have the strength, you're going to, you're going to succumb no different than I'm kind of scattered right now. Cause I'm just trying to think about how, how I can now put the world, the geopol geopolitics, and then the activism and putting that all in perspective and then have you guys really be appreciative of the West of the land that you live in without fighting so hard to, because it just, it just galls me because it just Saudis are, are under pressure to have a specific political, I don't know, to have, to, to, I don't know, the Saudis want to look a specific way. They have a specific propaganda so they don't look bad in the eyes of the West. And so we know that people know that they are imbalanced and we know that people are trying to fight for their balance. We know that people, not everyone's gonna fight for it, that people are gonna succumb to whatever it is that they believe that they are required to live. <laughs> and Sorry, I'm I'm so distracted right now. Because these are new thoughts. I hear my husband. Morning, Jason. <laughs> I'm down here doing Facebook. Okay. So hold on. When I have these new thought processes, that's like I almost have to have silence and have to have nothing around me, nobody listening except for you guys, so I can glean this out because it's a new thought process. Because I have to, you know, because we have to really come to terms with how how we can capitalize on the strengths that we have and people who are weak, who I, you know, you can't help the weak people. You really can't. They have to be bringing them up some, themselves. So why I'm the way I am, almost like a dictator, is because J-Juice is a gift for the people who can handle it. The people who are strong, they're not gonna mischaracterize it, who are not gonna really damage it in any way. And I'm not saying that someone that's weak would damage it really, they don't have that kind of power, but not everybody is strong enough. And if I, you know, and so, to, to handle. And if, if they're already fighting me on information I'm putting out there, they're going to fight the protocol and it would be just be a battle that they're not going to win. And then they'll blame the protocol as one of the many blames that they have against society, they're blaming the government, blaming chemtrails, blaming something. So I don't want, I don't want J juice to be something someone's going to blame for why their life is not the way they want it. So I look at when someone defects from a country, they are, um, fighting for their life and you deserve your freedom if you're going to fight that hard because that video that i watched where she got into she went i don't know she ended up abroad and then she ended up like in thailand and somebody i guess uh some officials from the saudi embassy found out that she was trying to leave and get asylum over in australia and they they tried they they uh I don't know if they took her passport. I don't think they took her passport, but they tried to just persuade her to go on, go back home. 
and then she locked herself up into a hotel. And then somehow um, an Australian reporter came in there. She was able to sneak in and then she had her phone and she was able to appeal to the community and the reporter was able to appeal to her people outside to make sure to figure out what's going on outside to see if they're really bringing in the UN to go and help her with this asylum. So there was, you know, the airport staff and the hotel staff and even her family were trying to stop her from uh, going away and they want to get her on the plane back to Riyadh, which would then be her demise. And so finally, at some point, the UN intervened and they brought her and actually instead of because Australia wouldn't take her in because that's where she's trying to go to was Australia, but Canada took her in. Okay. And I'm just like, wow. I mean, she was in that hotel for like 24 hours. And I'm like, here we are, we're in America fighting the freaking elements. Oh my God, the chemtrails, oh my God, the 5G, and we're all still living. Oh my God, you know, the, the vaccines. And and then we have this chick that's in a hotel room for 24 hours, not knowing if they're gonna go and storm it and then take, but they can't forcibly kidnap her. She has to voluntarily go. But then that's one of the better stories that she was actually able to get asylum. Another story where she didn't have that that luxury of a um, of a reporter who took her to took up for her cause. So this is where reporters can be really awesome. And so she, this chick that's in an airport again tried to then get some random person to make a phone call to do something, and just so happened that airport staff knew she was there. They contacted her her family. This is another chick, and they basically forcibly took her, they tricked her into a hotel because they said, oh yeah, we'll get you on another plane to somewhere else. They tricked her into a hotel, they locked her in that hotel and then they duct taped her to a wheelchair. And even the Philippine airline staff, as well as then other, like the uncles, they forcibly took her onto a plane to the Saudi Arabian plane to then go back to Saudi Arabia and she's missing, okay? So two women, one was able to escape with the help of a reporter who really did good, wasn't demonizing somebody, wasn't, you know, breaking somebody down because they don't believe in their politics. No, a real true reporter, the ones that really should be out there, not the Julian Assange's and all that stuff that are, that are causing the division in America, but no, a, a reporter saying, hey, I'm going to take up for this cause of this woman and get her story out there. So then we can get the UN and all the officials to now force them to intervene in between this girl's, if she was to go back home, she would have died, okay, or be thrown in jail and tortured. So one woman was able to escape and she fought. The other woman tried to fight, but she didn't have her duckies in a row. I mean, she was, she was strong, but not strong enough. And you know, and that's kind of what happens. It happens in America too. It happens when kids are getting kidnapped and people are being kidnapped and forced against their will to be sex slaves, the things with Jeffrey Epstein. It doesn't just happen in Saudi Arabia. So don't turn this into a political thing that, oh God, we, this is why we don't like the Islam and the Muslims. No, that's not at all where I'm going. When you have imbalanced people, when you have imbalanced people, they're going to find ways to oppress you. They're going to find ways to shut you down if they feel that you're um, on a life-giving type of mentality, where they feel your strength. Why do you think certain genders and certain people are being oppressed by other people? Because you have a weak, strong person really trying to hold down a weak, weak person, okay? And this is why, you know, we are doing the jages so you don't become that victim or predator to do that. And so the jages is like the beacon of light that people get drawn to, but not everybody is strong enough to be able to handle it. And so what I, you know, how I kind of figure this out, because I don't want to be one of many people's fears. I don't want to be put in the category of fluoride, though people are already doing that. But if you're going to do the J-Juice, I don't want to have that in my midst, where if you're already fighting me on the information that I have right now, if you don't like the way in which I talk about certain things or what I do 
or how I do things or my politics, then there's no way you're gonna be able to handle the protocol because that's gonna be 10 times even more controversial and and more, I don't know, annoying. And it's gonna be something that, that, that you're gonna have to deal with, okay? And so I look at J-Juice as just the beacon of life, the life, the thing that you fight for. And if you can't fight for your own life, then there's nothing, you can't fight for somebody else's life. You really can't. And so, and so a lot of ways I look at just, I look at everything and I'm just like, damn, I'm really lucky to be here in America. I'm not gonna worry about the whole thing with the arms. I'm not gonna worry about the politics. I'm gonna tell you, the people who are weak will deal with whatever. You can't make somebody weak strong. You really can't. You can't fight somebody else's battles, okay? You know, if any, I mean, look, Australia was disarmed because they had a bunch of stuff going on. They're still around, the people are still around. I have people in Australia on this protocol they're able to go back and forth. They're doing the protocol. They don't have any officials coming to their house and taking away their salt, taking away their life. No. This fear that our government's going to kill us and, and, and do, is induced upon somebody else that's trying to break America apart. Now, they're not trying to take away all of our guns, but they're trying to take away the guns that have high capacity <laughs> where it mows down 20, 30 people in like five seconds but they're not trying to take away your nine millimeter, your handgun, your revolver for personal protection against maybe people who are nefarious within your community. But if you have to have an AK-47 or an AR or an ARS or whatever it is, and we have mentally imbalanced people who are afraid of their own government, afraid of their own neighbors, that's a recipe for a disaster. Our government's gonna have to do something. If you're afraid of the chemtrails in the skies, if you're afraid of the contrails, if you're afraid of 5G, if you're afraid of fluoride in vaccines, you're a freaking entitled, goddamn titled, spoiled ass American, spoiled ass Westerner, who absolutely has no, no like worldly views and doesn't understand truly what being oppressed means. <laughs> Okay, like I really just, I'm like, wow. We take shit for granted here in the West. We really do. We take so much for granted. When somebody is trying to defect out of a country where they do have very oppressive laws, but yet they're able to go and have be an activist to go and, and campaign to be able to drive. So women have a certain amount of freedom to be able to organize, okay? So obviously not every country that we think is bad is really that bad. But if it's bad for you, then you fight for your way out. If it's not that bad for you, then don't worry about it. It's each individual person that's gonna have to fight for what they truly believe in when it comes to their body, mind, and spirit. And you can't fight for somebody else unless you're, unless you're a reporter that sees something like this girl that needs help with bringing something like that to light to have, that I can see. But that's very few and far between. And a good reporter, a real true reporter, not some stupid blogger that has an opinion over some stupid crap. No, a real true reporter is the one that was there in that hotel room getting her story out so that way the UN can step in and help this chick out of that situation that she absolutely had no really over control. She had control up to a certain point. And that's when somebody deserves to have the help. When someone deserves to have somebody really step in and help her get asylum and defect to Canada or Australia, if Australia would have been. So this puts a lot of shit in perspective for myself, and I'm hoping maybe for some of you, but I'm telling you, this is why I am the way I am. Not everybody deserves to have my help if you're gonna fight me, if you're gonna fight my team, if you're gonna question myself and my team, 
if you have to question me after all the research I put out in there, if you have to fight me on the information I put out there, you don't deserve to have my attention. You can still have the protocol. The book is out there. Anybody can get it. My information, I have so many videos on YouTube that you don't have to have me right there next to you. You don't even need my group a support system, but you're not going to get the access to me on an individual level. Okay. There are people from all over the world in my group, on my Facebook, doing this. Who they represent, I have no idea. I don't even care. Okay. But I'm telling you, the activism that ha doesn't have to do with human rights when it comes to defecting from something that isn't aligned with you, body, mind, and spirit, is bullshit. Okay. Be very freaking happy you're in the West. Be very freaking happy that you have the ability to campaign for your floor, anti fluoride water. Be very happy. That you, but then you take it to the extremes and then you become an entitled, spoiled American. And no wonder the West and America has been having now a bad uh, uh, um, a reputation. Because we, we're so spoiled. So, you know, balance is going to happen. The pendulum will swing the other way and you're going to get what you've been want, wanting. The more imbalanced you are fighting for your, your right to breathe clean air when the air is pretty clean when you think about it, you're going to bring on law enforcement and you're going to create a world of oppression because you created that. Saudi Arabia, they have rules. Women do have a certain amount of rights. Not a lot, but they have a certain amount of rights. But if a woman really truly wants to get out of that situation, there's ways to do that if you can campaign to, to drive a car in Saudi Arabia where they couldn't. Now they threw those women in jail. But they had the ability prior to... Um, because I think what is it, the Saudi prince came out one time and said that, that yes, we're now going to allow women to drive. And, and it was like, I think he was talking to President Trump. And then I think later on, the women that campaigned for women to drive were then thrown in jail. So they had the ability to campaign prior to then having um, something, uh, having it be put out there for the world to see. Okay, so if you really truly think that, that your environment, your lifestyle is that oppressive, then you fight for your way to get out of that oppression, whether it's in your body, mind, and spirit, where there's things in your body that are not working the way they're supposed to be, and they're oppressing you, keeping you in a jail in your body, then you fight for your way out of that. And there are ways to do that at the cellular level. If you're in a country or in a family or in a situation where you are being oppressed or kidnapped, you fight. But for you to even be kidnapped to begin with, people have to target you. They have to see that you have a weakness and they capitalize on that. They don't traffic just everybody. They find the people that are weak minded. They can tell. Predators know who the prey are. They know who they can kidnap because they don't kidnap everybody. Okay. So if you are in a situation where you're being oppressed, it's because your biochemistry allowed it. And so now you have the chance to get out of that. So I'm just still thinking about this. This is a new thought process in my head, how I'm going to address this because I truly am thankful. You know, when I was, when I was doing the activism with the, oh God, back in the conspiracy world, I was so mad at my government for vaccinating me, for allowing me to succumb to cancer disease and chronic illness where I couldn't maintain the way I was expected to in the society that I lived in. I was so mad. And then finally I did my J juice. I got everything well balanced. And now I see things totally different. And I'm like, I know where all of these activists come from, especially in America. Not the ones that are actually fighting for their human rights, like in Saudi Arabia against, you know, violations of human rights. No, I'm talking about here in America where you have access to, to, to food, to water, to air, to, to going and driving to voting, to whatever, and we just shit on it. Those of you that are so full of cancer, disease, and chronic illness, you have no idea what it could be like in another country. No freaking idea. And you don't even appreciate what it is that you have. The real true activists are the ones that are fighting for their right to actually live in a 
free society for the most part. And if you don't think that America is free, then go live in Saudi Arabia as a woman. Every single person on my Facebook who doesn't think they're free in America or Australia or Canada or the UK, that you think you need to have all this justice around the Jeffrey Epstein, okay, yeah, but what's it gonna do for you? Nothing. You haven't changed your course in history to change then the outcome to not create predators and, and victims. But you fight for your own ability to stay on this earth indefinitely. And that happens at the cellular level. And those that are trying to fight for their right to get out of an oppressive country, they will. And there's somebody like a reporter, a real true reporter, journalist, not some bullshit blogger that wants to make money off all of your reactions. You let them, and then they will, then they will come to America or Canada or Australia or hell, I don't know, London. And then they go and create their life and manifest it the way they see fit. And I hope they do something good with their life with through all of that, you know, craziness. So anyways, that was a little bit difficult, but that's okay. That's a new thought process I have to take on. And so I'll wrestle around it. And then also too, I'm gonna be practicing to, once I you know, get that figured out, how to talk about the JJs in 18 minutes or less with only utilizing this and this. So it's my next challenge along with taking on other responsibilities, but, um, but that's just something I needed to get out. Okay, so there's my hormones for the day. You guys have a good one. My husband's home for the day, so I'm going to hang out with him. But yeah, yeah, I needed to get that out. All right. And yeah, I feel bad for the women that, that couldn't make it out of their country in oppressive families. And the women are able to campaign for certain things, had probably a better family than other women who weren't able to campaign for their own self. So makes you wonder. All right, bye.